I am I am baffled by stigma around addiction. I'm truly baffled by it. I, I, I don't feel it myself. My patients don't seem to feel it. The recovery community doesn't seem to feel it. Yet everyone talks about it and, and blames people's resistance on stigma. And then we can't use the word addiction like as that's pejorative. Screw that. Let's use the word liberally and all the time and as much as we can. And let's use the word, just bring back the word junkie and alcoholic and all these things. Because here's the thing. People with this genetic disorder are actually a more evolved form of the human being. And let me tell you what I'm explaining. Um, because people that call addicts weak and they just, it's like, what do you, if you deal with addicts, you, you would know that's, that's tr not true. It's like, the, what are you talking about? These are wonderful, rich, intelligent, creative. So, oh my God, they're amazing. So here's the, the bottom line, is if you look on the globe where this disease has its greatest genetic presence, it's always in environments that are isolated, like when any gene emerges in an isolated population, and the populations of humans that have gone through almost oftentimes genocidal, multi-generational assaults. So where do you see it? Scotland, Central Europe, mm -hmm. North American Indians. The people that survived in extreme adversity, magically, this gene is what emerges. So the survivors are the people with this gene. I'm not saying they were using when they were fighting to survive. It's just a survivor gene. I mean, look at your peers that are in recovery. They've survived a lot, and they survived through everything. And I started experimenting with this when I was uh, lecturing large groups of addicts. I'd say, you know what, if a, if a bunch of Huns came over the hill and started attacking, what would you guys do? And what would you do? You recovering? You recovering? Yes. Yeah, what would you do? If, a, if Huns broke in the building here, what would you what would your ins <laughs> Um, <laughs> barbarians, a bunch of barbarians ran in here. What would you do? I would just charge right back at Okay, you. that's bizarre. That's a bizarre impulse for a normie. That's like, yeah. what? What are you talking about? Right. I would try to, I'd go out on that ledge there and try to run away. First thought is to charge right Yeah, well, that's what addicts do. And apparently, that's, that's a survival thing. And if you look at where you find addicts, they make great fighter pilots, great shortstops, great extreme athletes. And in, in your experience in that moment, you'd kind of get high, right? Sure. The world would slow down. You'd have your wits about you. We lose our minds, the, the non-addict. We we're at our worst. You're at your best. And that's the gene. That's the gene. Yeah. And that gene is highly penetrated and highly present in extreme situations. We need that gene. I started thinking, why does it, why has it persisted in the human genome so long? Oh, it's a more advanced form of the human being in, in adversity. So please, everybody, stop it with the shaming of the addicts. All right? We're done with this? I love it. No more stigma. Yeah. BS. So